Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain the concept of minimum potential. The concept of minimum potential can be used to determine the field variables. I don't want to confuse you by using the words field variables. I can simply say that the concept of minimum potential is used to find the displacements of your bar or your beam when they are subjected to loading. You may ask this question, well, you can find the displacement of your bar or your beam by solving the governing differential equations. Well, this is another method. Let us say for now, the concept of minimum potential is another method to find the displacements of your bar or your beam when they are subjected to loading. Now, to demystify this process of concept of minimum potential, let me start by drawing two straight lines. So watch it now. Let us get straight into the topic. So to begin with, let me draw two lines. Okay, the red line and the green line. The red line here represents the ground. The green line represents the ceiling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a spring to the ceiling. So let me do that. So here is our spring and I'm attaching a spring to the ceiling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the spring by a mass M. So let me represent that by yellow color, the mass. I'm going to represent that by this yellow line and it is represented by dashed line this mass for a purpose okay so that is the mass that i am loading so at this initial position when i just try to load the spring by the mass at this initial position the height the distance between the mass and the spring and the, and the ground it is h Okay, the moment I gradually release the mass, what is going to happen is this mass is going to stretch the spring. Okay, so the spring gets deflected. Now, let us say that you are measuring the distance. The, initially, the value of x is 0. And the value of x gradually increases because this mass is going to stretch the spring and the spring gets deflected. So the value of x increases. Now, you may want to use positive values for the displacement along the downward direction. And you may want to use negative values for the displacement in the opposite direction. It really doesn't matter what sign that you use. Well, if you want to use uh, positive for the upward deflection and negative for the downward dire direction, that is perfectly fine. As long as you are uh, consistent with using those signs as you do the mathematics, you are going to end up with exactly the same answer. Okay. Well, now as the mass gets deflected, let us say that the mass comes. Let us say that the mass comes to this position. Right. At this particular position. Right. I'm not saying that this is an equilibrium position. The mass is getting deflected. Let us say that at this particular position, the value of the value, it is a certain value of x, a particular value of x. Okay. Now, what is the gravitational? I mean, what is the what is the distance between this mass at this new position on the ground? It's going to be h minus x. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the total potential energy at, of this mass at this particular position. Okay, so I'm going to write the equations now, the total potential energy of the mass right at this position. So here we go. The total potential energy of the mass, it is denoted by the symbol pi, it is equal to well, first, I would say that it has got gravitational potential energy. That's for sure because it is suspended at a certain height from the ground. So it has got gravitational 
potential energy so the letter p stands for the potential energy plus it also has this mass also has the strain energy which means that when you just remove the mass the the spring bounces back to its previous position so the, there is one more potential energy but it is not gravitational potential energy it is strain energy it is strain energy so i will write that it is strain energy there are two potential energies now one is the gravitational potential energy and the second one is the strain energy so let me do the next step what is the gravitational potential energy it is mg into the distance the height the height in the in our case it is h minus x at this position plus the strain energy of the spring when it is getting deflected by an amount x it is given by the equation half into k into x square okay so i'm going to give a link in the description uh, just to demystify how this equation actually comes so there is a separate video that i have made in case if you're not familiar with how this particular equation comes then you can watch that video in the description okay so this is the total potential energy it is uh, gravitational potential energy plus the strain energy okay so let me bring these guys inside this equation so in the next page i'm going to say the total potential energy pi is equal to it is mg into h minus mg into x plus half into k into x square where k is the stiffness by the way what is stiffness stiffness is load by deflection it is the amount of force that is required to stretch the spring by a certain amount del or in our case uh, the load that is uh, it, it is the amount of load that is required to stretch the spring by an amount x but anyway if x is the equilibrium position okay fine now in the next step i can say potential energy pi is equal to half into k into x square i'm just rearranging this equation minus m g x plus m g h now if you look at this equation this is strain energy now what is this force i mean it is a weight and x is the distance traveled by the weight which means that what is force times the distance what is the force which is weight into distance traveled by the weight that is equal to work done okay so the potential energy now is given by the expression finally pi is equal to strain energy minus work done plus m g h which can be called as gravitational potential energy initial gravitational potential energy okay we will keep this equation at the back of your our mind now what i'm going to do is i'm going to plot a graph by taking the potential energy along the y-axis and the displacement of the mass along the x-axis and i'm just interested in finding out what would the graph look like as the mass goes along the downward direction or maybe even along the upward direction how do you think the potential energy is going to vary when this mass is uh, when this particular mass is going to move in the downward direction how the potential energy would vary and as it moves in the upward direction how the of course this mass is not going to move in the upward direction but just out of curiosity i am just interested in finding out how the potential energy would vary okay so this is what i'm going to do and the next step i'm going to plot a graph in order to plot the graph i'm going to use matlab here so you can see uh, i have written the code so you can see that uh, the displacement it varies from minus 10 to plus 10 and the stiffness of the spring is 200 and the mass is assumed to be 1 kg gravitational uh, the g acceleration due to gravity it's 9.81 meter per second square 
and uh, the value of h is 100 i'm just assuming it to be 100 okay i, I have i'm just going to plot a graph by taking the potential energy along the y-axis and the displacement of the mass along the x-axis so let me do that and run this program so let me see what comes so i'm going to get a graph something like this very interesting okay let me bring this graph and let me analyze this graph now so what do you think this graph indicate what does it indicate well I, I can for sure say that i'm interested in this particular position now why is that i'm interested in this position you look here at this position even though there is an appreciable displacement x there is no appreciable value difference in the potential energy even though the value of x changes even though the value of x changes there is no appreciable displacement i mean there is no appreciable difference in the potential energy you see so we can say even though the value of x changes which means del x it changes there is that's a finite value but the value of del pi which is the potential energy along the y-axis it's actually going to be zero right so for we can say the value of del pi by del x even though there is a change in appreciable change in the displacement the value of uh, change in potential energy is actually going to be zero so for extremely small values of x we can now rewrite this equation as do pi by do x is equal to zero okay so that's a key equation we got this key equation right from this graph okay so let me use this equation let me go back to the uh, step that i derived and let me use this equation what is the equation that we have finally the equation is dou pi by dou x is equal to zero okay now interestingly if i reflect this equation at the if i if so it happens at what point it happens at the minimum potential the potential is minimum at this point so at the minimum potential the condition is when the potential energy is a minimum dou pi by dou x is equal to zero there is no appreciable difference in potential energy even though there is a small finite displacement of the mass there is not going to be any appreciable change in the total potential energy okay it happens at the minimum potential okay if i apply this equation if i just apply this equation if i differentiate this equation with respect to x so what is that i'm going to get okay the equation that i will be getting is dou pi by dou x if i differentiate this equation i'll be getting 2 into k 2 by 2 into kx which means i will be getting kx since i am differentiating with respect to x minus mg and if i differentiate this term it becomes zero okay so that is very important because you see if i differentiate the potential energy always this term is going to become zero so i don't need that guy i don't need that guy the other explanation is let us say that h becomes zero okay or if that is confusing for you if i always differentiate the potential energy that term is not going to play any role so we can say rewrite the expression for potential energy as pi is equal to strain energy minus work done alone because that mgh is not going to play any role if because when i differentiate it it's going to become zero okay when i differentiate it otherwise if you want to carry that term with you well it's not going to do any damage to your equation even if you carry that term with you okay the shape of this curve will not depend on the value of h that's the point it's not going to depend on the value of h so whether the value of h is going to be 200 or 2000 or 2 million 
the value of h is not at all going to change okay fine so continuing this equation dou pi by dou x gives this and that is equal to zero so now if you work out for the value of x x is equal to mg divided by k and what is mg divided by k it's del it's the equilibrium deflection it's the it's the deflection at the equilibrium position okay which means the mask actually settles down at that particular position so how do i know that well i know from this equation for stiffness stiffness is equal to load by deflection so deflection is equal to deflection is equal to mass load by stiffness so you can get the equilibrium position of your mass the mass where it actually settles down when it is loaded by using this expression of minimum potential and that expression for minimum potential is dou pi by dou x is equal to zero okay i hope to some extent i have demystified the concept of minimum potential the concept of rayleigh ritz method hinges on the concept of minimum potential so rayleigh ritz technique can be used to find the deflection of your bar or your beam when they are subjected to uniformly distributed load or point load you can use ex you're going to use exactly the same uh, procedure so i will just walk through the procedures the first step is you have to find the strain energy then you have to find the work done wd for work done then you have to find the potential energy which is strain energy minus work done of course mgh doesn't matter and the fourth one is use this equation dou pi by dou x is equal to zero and find the value of x that is a deflection okay which means you can easily find the field variables by using the concept of minimum potential thank you so much for the patience